the lineup that we have that can produce 10 runs on any given night is, is pretty special. And the, the depth that this organization have is, is kind of scary for, for years to come. Corbin Burns is going to join us in the next couple minutes. And scratch that, he's going to join us right now. Meow. Baltimore Orioles coming off a nice dub against the Red Sox. I watched most of that game yesterday. Corbin, great to have you on, man. So last time we spoke, it was like 12 hours after you got <laughs> traded to the Orioles. How much is life different now versus that time period? Uh, things are good. Um, obviously, the first you know two weeks of, of a trade are, are pretty crazy, getting to know everyone, getting into camp, um, trying to meet all the new people. But um, yeah, it was good. Rest of the camp ended up good. Um, off to a good start to the to the season, so uh, can't complain. Got, got a good group, and uh, we're winning baseball games. How many guys, players, staff, working at the stadium, are you walking by going, oh, dang it, I do not know that guy's name, and it's too late into the season to ask him? <laughs> um, players and staff, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good on. Um, pretty good or 100%? No, I, no, definitely, definitely not a hundred percent. You know, ah. I, 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 I think I've, I've got first names down, um, or, or at least you know the nicknames that, uh, that 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 they go by. Um, but yeah, as far <laughs> as like like stadium staff, uh, parking attendants, yeah, I. Good luck. Good luck. And there's still time in my mind. No, <laughs> guys, like it's it's really early. There's still time, or there's no? still time. No, there's still to time. reintroduce yourself again. Like they all know who Corbin Burns is. I know, but I mean, how how often have you been at Camden Yards yet? Just just one, you know, one week. So we've we've had two series there. So we're 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 back home. So plenty of time. Seven days, of time. seven days mm -hmm. plus the first two days that you're there. Look, after, once you reach that nine to ten day window, now all of a sudden Burnsies is a jerk because they all know who he is. They're like, oh, Corbin, they moved you up a start so that. You could just keep pitching so good. You're the savior of this organization. And you're like, hey, what's up, Joe, what's up, Jim, man? Tom? Hey, guy. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yep. That's, that's, that's the default. Hey, what, what's, hey, how you doing? Yeah. So, and hey. I... <laughs> so if you work, if you work for the Orioles and Burnsy says, hey, how you doing? And never says your name. He doesn't know your name. Introduce yourself to him because he is a superstar. And it's hard for superstars who get traded from the only organization that they ever knew as a baby to know everybody's <laughs> name. So help my guy out. Yes. Uh, it would, hey, it would, it would, we're doing yeah. good. We're, we're hanging in there. We're, we've, okay. like, like I said, we've, we, I got most of the guys down. I've, I've, I know, you know, I know Adley behind the plate and I know James behind the plate. So we're good. Let's roll. <laughs> That's that's all you really need to know. Just just give him some dab, say what's up, big dog, and let's go to work. Uh, up, I want to I want to jump right into this, bro. Sunday's coming. It's coming quick. Uh, the excitement level, the nerves. Um, you're facing your old team there. It's business as usual, or is this something that you know you circled once you got traded? No, it's, it's business as usual. Um, you know that, that's that's kind of how I am. Whether it's opening day, whether it's a postseason start for me, I try not to put anything more into any given start. Um, so go about my process, prepare for it. Um, obviously, saw a lot of those guys play for for multiple years, so um, they obviously know how I pitch. So it's a, it, it'll be a fun matchup. But um, yeah, just going up about my five day plan as if I would uh, if I saw making a start in July against, um, you know, the Yankees, the Red Sox, whoever it may be. So, um, you know, for me, it's just going out there, sticking to my process, um, say hi to these guys today and tomorrow. And then uh, when Sunday comes, it's time to uh, strap it on and, and go win a baseball game. As the kids say, I'm going to say cap. I'm going to say cap. I'm going to say you're lying. <laughs> because when you go through your scouting reports, are you sitting there going – I got to really delve into what these numbers say. I got to really delve into, no, no, no. I remember, I remember Yelly always swung at this or I remember, wait a minute. No, he's thinking that I remember that. And he knows that I, he knows, I know, we all know. Ah, how, how is that? How is that dynamic in your brain going? So it's, it's, it's funny. Cause everyone always asks like, you know, oh, how do you get this guy out? How do you get this guy out? And I'm like, well, for years I watched this guy swing at this in the dirt. Like, 
but then you go start looking at scattering points, you're kind of like, damn, my, like, yep. he, he actually kind of hits that pretty well. So like, you know, so it's just, it's, you know, you start, you can start trying to nitpick, um, you know, what you think, you know, seeing, you know, from the dugout and, you know, seeing what they're talking about. But um, for me, I've, I've got to trust, you know, the knowledge that I have of picking apart scattering reports, looking at numbers um, and just trust what I do. Um, you know, I, I pitch different than anyone else in the league that's, you know, attacking these guys. So, um, you know, with how my cutter plays and my curveball change up slider, whatever it may be righty versus lefty, um, I just got to go out and trust what I see and, and trust what the numbers are telling me and, and what I do best and um, kind of put to the back of your, your, your mind, I guess, what, uh, you know, what you may have seen these guys done for the last four or five years, but um, you just got to trust your stuff. And, and for me, that's easy for me to stick to my process and, my scouting reports and, you know, watching video three or four days leading up to it. It's just, just kind of what I do. And, um, you know, I'm excited to, to go out and have another start and hopefully get another win. I'm going to ask one more question about this whole thing. You getting any text messages, guys talking smack saying, Hey man, I've been waiting for this moment or it just, you know, they haven't, re- it's been like the calm before the storm right now. No, I, I haven't talked to many of them. Um, All right. mostly just, you know, they, they got into town early yesterday. So I got a, I, I, you know, I got a text from a couple of the staff like, Hey, we were, you know, here, we're here. And it was like two o'clock in the afternoon and we we're just getting to the field to, to play the Red Sox. I was like, you know, damn, like enjoy the full off day in, in Baltimore. Um, but yeah, just, just mainly, mainly guys saying that, you know, excited to see, you. um, you know, look forward to seeing the yard today, but no, uh, no smack talk, nothing like that. Who are you most excited to face for any reason? You know, maybe someone you haven't faced, on the brew crew or somebody that you're super tight with that you're just like, yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I, I actually really haven't faced a lot of those guys over there. Um, you know, some of the new guys that have, have, have just came in, obviously I faced Hoskins a couple times. Um, Gary Sanchez, just, you know, some of those guys that are, that are new to that lineup. But as far as like in regular season, you know, games, I've you know, never faced Yelly, I've never faced Willie. Um, you know, the young guys that come up, obviously I haven't faced them in, in game. So, um, it'll be good to, you know, it'll be fun to face those guys. Um, obviously, you, you become friends with them, playing with them for so many years. But, um, yeah, a lot of those guys you haven't faced. So it's it's, it's fun and exciting facing um, you guys for the first time. Do you have any anticipation of what kind of reception? Because we saw what kind of reception Jackson Holiday got when he was in Boston on the road. Do you have any anticipation of what kind of reception he's going to get when he comes home now? Yeah, I think it's gonna be nuts. Um, you know, they, it seemed like we had fifty percent of the st- uh, you know the fans in Fenway cheering for him and, and welcoming him. So, um, you know, I'm excited to to see that you know the turnout of the crowd tonight. Um, excited to see him get his first knock and 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 get that crowd going. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's the, I mean the, the hype's there. Kid's a player. Um, I told him to stay away from me. There's so many cameras falling around. I said, like, I, I don't need that much TV time. Like, I'll, I'll high five you down in the tunnel, but just just stay away from me. I don't need all that camera. Like, there's three or four cameras falling around, and the Red Sox got the whole Netflix stuff going on. I, it, was, I, it was way too many cameras for, for, for my liking. Yeah, you're definitely a face for radio. So if radio people start, <laughs> start following around, then you, can, then you can get it done. Do you guys ever as a team – we had Grayson Rodriguez on here the other day. And he kind of hit on it a little bit. Have, do you guys, as a big league team, because everyone's getting talking about their minor league, their AAA team, do you guys ever just like look at the stats or look at the look at the score on minorleaguebaseball.com and be like, "Holy crap, these dudes are smashing!" Because what they're doing is historic. Yeah, so I think you know it's it seems like it's been on MLB Network and ESPN the last four or five days. We we've been seeing it. Um, Obviously, a lot of these guys in our clubhouse have, you know, played with a lot of, um, you know, Kerstad and Stouser um, and, you know, a lot of these guys that have been down there, Holiday, Norby, Mayo. I mean, we, obviously, those guys were in camp. Um, so they grew up with them, you know, in the minor leagues. They lived with them. So, you know, they're talking to them all the time. And um, the numbers they're putting up down there is just absolutely stupid. Um, you know, scoring 26, 27 runs a game. Um behind the lineup that we have that can produce 10 runs on any given night is, is pretty special. And the, the depth that this organization have is, is kind of scary for, for years to come. One more for you on Jackson holiday. How do you deal with nerves when you're 
first coming up, like it's different, right? I mean, after a certain X amount of time, it's just going to feel like another day heading to the ballpark and all of that. But yeah, I watched most of his games and even like defensively, the ball's coming through and it feels just like a normal ground ball, but now it's not. It's at Fenway Park and everyone's looking at you. So, you know, I could feel the the nerves just from watching him. So I don't know. I mean, how do you observe that? Do you guys try and give tips on that? You just say, hey, you're going to feel it. And then in two weeks, you're going to be like, cool, we're at the ballpark. Let's go win. Yeah, obviously, there's a lot of nerves coming from, you know, the, the all the hype, the, you know, the prospect that he is to, you know, to get to the big leagues and expect, you know, expect to perform. Um, you know, I haven't had that conversation yet. It's kind of been a whirlwind for him the last couple of days um, with, with, all, with all the stuff going on. But, um, you know, I imagine I'll sit down and have a conversation with him here in, in a few days. And it's just about it's about the expectation. Right. You know, you have this you have drafted one one fly through the you know the minor leagues 20 years old making your debut um you know there's just so much expectations that not necessarily the organization puts on you but just all the baseball puts on you to, to to come in and perform and be this guy and be a star um for the minute you get up so um i think he's handled it great um he's got gone about his business um he sticks to his routine goes out there plays his ass off um you know wants to win just as much as else in that dugout. So I think he's done a great job and, and he'll continue to, 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 to do a great job. But, um, you know, a kid that's probably never had any type of struggles in his career and in his life and um, getting to the big leagues at 20 years old, it's, it's going to be difficult and he's going to have those struggles. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure eventually in the next week or so, I'll have those conversations with him about, Hey, just go out and keep playing your game, you know, keep your head down. Don't worry about what's going on outside. Don't worry about the outside noise. Um, there's always going to be people trying to tear you down and, and, pulling for you not to do good just because you, you know, you're one, one and you flew through the minor league. So um, just how this game is, it's unfortunate, but you know, the kid is a great kid, great baseball player. He's going to play this game for a long, long time. You know, I could care less if he's over eight or over nine or makes an error or whatever it is. I want to know how's his voice on the bus. Did he sing <laughs> on the bus after the first road trip? So we he, we we had a quick uh, late bus last night. So he has he hasn't got on the mic yet. Um, so this mm. this next this next roadie he'll get on there. Um, he, he he lost to our bullpen catcher. We, we we play a little game of you, you got to name the capitals of the states. If not, the bullpen catcher gets a little gets a little cash on the side. Um, just graduated high school. I mean, last <laughs> week and and and, and failed. That. <laughs> uh, he's, he's definitely got some work to do, and and, and we'll definitely hear his uh, his singing voice here soon. Epic. All right, last one here. Um, moving over to your guy Josh Hader. So new to the party with Houston. My question that relates to what you're doing with Baltimore is, how much do you weigh? being you and doing what has worked versus what a new team brings to the mix. That could be front office, coaching staff, catchers, etc. I ask it because I've watched haters outings and I'm like, damn, he's using the slider more. I look it up. He is. And I think when he gave up that big homer to Davis Schneider, he even was surprised because Schneider's like, yo, my kryptonite's up and in haters. I thought I was fucked and <laughs> he didn't use it. He gave me a slider here and I smashed <laughs> it over the wall. So, I'm sure there could be some people behind the scenes like, hey, let's try that slider more. And Josh eventually is going to be like, yeah, I'm going to go back to like 75% heaters. So curious what your take is on that. Yeah, it's always, you know, coming to a, to a new organization, they have different philosophies, right? And um, even an organization from Milwaukee to Baltimore who are, you know, both very analytically driven. There's, you know, subtle differences here and there. Um, you know, Josh went from Milwaukee to San Diego to now Houston. So he's gotten a bunch of it the last couple of years. But um yeah it's 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 going about your process knowing what you do um you know i've talked to him a little bit and um he went through the same thing i went through with the justin you know it's a new team and, and new faces and new coaches and um relievers i think it's almost more difficult because obviously you, you it takes a little bit more of a, of a workload to, to get that work with the catchers and the pitching staff uh or the pitching coaches sorry um and so those guys throw five or six times in spring training so you're still kind of learning as you're as you're getting into the season um but yeah it's just kind of one of those things an organization might be like, hey your slider looks good and you think it looks good so you start throwing a little more and it, you know it it looks good initially and then um you kind of start to get away from what you do best so um he'll adjust it's one of those things he's one of the best closers in the game for a reason and and he's going to go out there and um figure it out one way or another and, and get back to being the josh hater that he is but um 
you know, he's, he's a guy I think any team in baseball would, would like to have at the back end of their bullpen, um, regardless of what he's doing right now, just because of what he can do and what he's done in the past. They all had a chance to have him at the back end of their bullpen. And so I'm going to end this. I'm going to end this with a little message from one of your good buddies directly to you. Okay. So hopefully we can run this and I want you to mm-hmm. listen, listen and watch. <laughs> yeah. Corbin Burns is, he's looking forward to it. Well, he dodged me this year. So that, that checks out. Uh, <laughs> I, faced him, I faced him once and he was scared to come in. You know, he, he's all talk. You know, he got his haircut. He got his haircut. He's kind of like, you know, Thor. Just he, he lost all. He's he just, he's scared around. He's just what it is. <laughs> oh, he's fine. It's fine. We, we we just played them last week. We we're in Pittsburgh, and he asked me. He's like, "I thought you were going to hit me." I said, "Dude, I tried. That was my first outing at camp. I did my <laughs> ass to try to run a cutter in there, and I threw it at your ankles. Like the, the cankles, like were, I was drawn to them, so I, I I couldn't get it up and in. Um, and then he, we had their home opener, right? It was like one, two of or one of our three home openers that we had for for teams this year. Goodness. <laughs> He was standing next to McCutcheon, number 22, and he's number 44. And I was like, it's fitting, double the number. You, I mean, you were like twice as wide as, as Kutch. I was like, the, the, these whites do not look good on you. Like, you need to get back to some creams or some pinstripes or something. Like, the, the, the straight whites didn't look good. He's like, dude, I know. Like, I don't understand it. Like, what's going on? So, he's he's funny. He, he's all rattled. But it was, uh, it, it, it was good to see him. He's off to a good start, so I'm happy for him. Love that. Yeah, he's having a good time in Pittsburgh. Already – as you've seen, like making his presence known in, in multiple ways, as Rowdy always should. So, uh, yeah. Corbin, good to see you, man. Yeah, you know how he is. Uh, good to <laughs> see you, man. Um, good luck this week and have fun. We'll be watching and we'll catch you in a few weeks. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered. 